Welcome to the CBA Level 3 Grill Coaching Sessions. This is an introductory session that's going to give you a quick overview of some of the tools that are required that we're not going to cover in future grill coaching sessions. First thing you need to do is download a full-size drawing from the CBA website or the Abana website if you're following their uh, protocols. Um, for the CBA you're going to go to our calsmith.org website then under the resources drop down menu documents technical documents and then the journeyman uh, that's downloaded as a pdf and you're going to take that to your local copy center to get the drawing done you're going to need a leafing stake and here's a simple fabricated version held in the vise that can be vise mounted or held in your anvil i found that the forward slope uh, to the working portion of the stake tends to be pretty handy as it supports the edges of the leaf allowing you to work in the void in the centre. The leafing stake features a uh, 90 degree bend here which is the included angle uh, with the bottom turned around about a one inch diameter round bar. Uh, that gives you sufficient room then for a three quarter inch wide scroll. If you go more than 90 degrees, your leaf can flatten out when you raise it. And if you go less, then the edges of the leaf will curl in, making a tube. So 90 degrees seems to be the optimum angle for me. And then make sure you've got enough land mass on the bottom of your stake that you can put the jaw off center. This is important so that when you're dropping your tongue hand to uh, curl the leaf, that your hand is not interfering with the box and pin of the vise because if you're moving your hand left or right to clear the box and the pin you're going to see that in your leaf. Here's some examples this is an earlier version with just a, a straight sided or vertical sided rather than forward sided crimping stake but you can see we're making a channel in the water leaf and then we're using that to anti-clastically raise and then having the pipe gives you the opportunity of working from underneath and I find that very handy especially working with that last three quarters of an inch of the tip of the leaf. You're going to want a leafing hammer. Mine is made from one inch square bar mild steel <clears throat> which I then case up and that's fine. I've had uh, plenty of these hammers in student hands for a couple of decades and they don't wear. So mild steel is just fine. These are not forging hammers, they're basically a repoussé hammer. So um, mild steel works fine. Uh, of that, I, you can see hopefully from the rule that I like about a three inch um, length on either side of the eye to the working surface. Um, and I find that is adequate and that helps me when I use this on things like the acanthus leaf. It gives me enough clearance so I'm not banging the handle into the edge of the leaf or my knuckles into the edge of the leaf. The peen in this particular case is three eighths of an inch thick and is about an inch wide. I don't care so much about the inch, but the three eighths of an inch thick is important as it must work with your crimping stape, giving room for the leaf material. And you can see here that this is my crimping stape. We'll get into this, uh, which has got a half inch groove. You've got the three eighth cross peen allowing you for a sixteenth inch material with the, the leaf. When you make the crimping stake, again, half inch diameter groove at the top here, um, I want you to give enough room in the neck so that you can swing the leaf backwards and forwards. What I'm about to do in this photograph is flare that edge. And in order to flare that edge inwards, I have to swing this leaf. So you want the clearance here. Don't make these too small. The other thing is I want to be able to hold this leaf vertically as I flare that from the working from the inside going outside. So they need to be deep enough and tall enough so you can work without interference. Here's one of the sections of the scroll work. After turning the beveled portion of the scroll uh, by hand, I then basically turn some the remainder of the scroll using scroll forms and I have three of them. Here are my three scroll forms. Top left is the longest or the largest of them and that's for the largest scroll. We've already turned this inner portion of the blown over beveled leaf scroll by hand over the bic and now all I'm doing is just wrapping the remainder of the scroll around the scroll form. 
My scroll form is slightly longer than I need, but I do mark where the corner of the scroll should land. But I find it handy having that extra little bit of material. Turning our attention to top right, this is the lower portion of the same large scroll. And I find that having a form just expedites um, the, the process of getting that bend correct. The bottom tier is the uh, beveled scrolls, the C beveled scrolls, or the beveled C scrolls. And you can see that here on the right hand side, that C scroll is drilled and tapped to accommodate this countersunk bolt that you can see in under my um, light there. And so to make this countersunk, I'm obliged to keep this uh, left hand scroll, if you will, open and then drill and countersink before I turn the remainder of the scroll. Now you've got a weak spot in the uh, the scroll material so it's going to bend there very easily and I find having a small form with the center mark so you can align the two centers cover that with a pair of tongs and then bend the remainder of the scroll form goes a long way I'm slightly off here but it's a, a tweak of the end not the scroll form I just need to sweeten this a little bit um, but that having that form I know you're only going to use it once but it's well worth the effort to make it Another tooling such as scrolling horns, scrolling wrenches of various sizes, etc., you should have on hand before you start the grill. That's the end of this introductory coating session. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking on the round button to the right there. And the next video in the series is the rectangular button to your left. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.